and welcome to SAP TechEd 2020. I'm happy that you tuned in to our virtual experience. Last year around this time, I was physically at Las Vegas, Barcelona and Bangalore already. But this year, I am on this amazing rooftop here. This is also not too bad, except that I, of course, miss meeting you in person. 2020 is really an exceptional year, impacting each and every one of us. And we have to go through it together as a shared journey. Before I actually go into SAP technology updates, I want to talk to you about a few very important topics. The first one being racial injustice. It's more visible than it has been ever before in my generation's lifetime. And if something like this happens, we must speak up, we must take action. We have to give everyone a fair chance. And as the tech industry, we should lead by example. A lot of companies acted, which is good. And SAP also did a couple of things. For example, we committed to increase diversity across our workforce beyond gender. Also, we thought about how can we change how we think? And it has a lot to do with how we speak, because language shapes reality. And we are eliminating insensitive language like blacklist, whitelist, from our code, documentation, trainings, websites, etc. It's very easy to say deny list and allow list instead. And although this seems to be a very small change, it really changes how we think and therefore also how we act. We want to inspire other, other companies to follow these or similar ideas as well. The next big topic I want to talk about is how we deal with our environment. A couple of weeks back, I visited the Futurium in my hometown in Berlin. It basically is a museum of possible futures asking, how do we want to live in the future? And in the end, it is our responsibility as a society to shape the future we want to live in. I think about climate change. I think about overconsumption of resources. I think about plastic pollutions in our oceans and CO2 emissions. And maybe we are really the last generation to carry out significant change and to cause correct. And when I walked in this Futurium, and I looked at all the challenges and all the opportunities, I kept thinking about what can SAP do and what can the broad SAP portfolio do to make a difference. SAP itself, we will be CO2 neutral by 2025. That's our ambition. And also we launched a program called Climate 21. And with that, we are embedding sustainability metrics in all our analytical and transactional applications. So we want to help the many, many companies that also want this change to make it happen. And last but not least, on everyone's mind, is COVID-19. I hope that all of you are safe and sound, because that's not a given in the moment. I know it's very stressful to work from home. Maybe you have caretaking responsibilities. And we can only beat this pandemic together. In Germany, I was responsible from the SAP side for the German Corona One app we developed together with Deutsche Telekom for the German government. And for us, it was clear that this should be an open source project. And it resulted to be the largest open source project on behalf of the German government for all times. More than 13,000 GitHub contributions. And that is what I really love about development. First, you have an idea, a thought, and then if you can think it, often you can also build it. And this is what I like about the collective power of the development community. Now, let us get into some of the SAP updates around our technology portfolio this year. Last year at TechEd, I shared with you that the Intelligent Enterprise Program is the largest engineering program we have at SAP. And that is still the case. We defined seven sweet qualities, like security and identity, and also workflow, also embedded analytics, across these four end-to-end -end processes. 
that we defined, lead to cash, source to pay, recruit to retire, and design to operate. SAP helps companies, hundreds of thousands of companies with all of those. Last year at TechEd, we were done with less than 15% of that fundamental challenge that we have in front of us. We delivered a lot, so this year we will end up at 80 to 90% completion rate. And that is a reason to celebrate. I want to thank all the SAP colleagues, of course, but even more important, all you as customers, as developers, as partners. I want to thank you for your patience, and I also want to thank you for your partnership, because all of that we do together with customers and partners. And we won't stop here. We continue with the wave two, where events become more important and we make extensibility much simpler. If you want to have more information on that, please check out the integration strategy talk by Michael Ameling and Philip Herzig. And then 2020 has been a very special year for us at SAP because it marks the 10 year anniversary of SAP HANA. And there's so much to celebrate. HANA plays a vital role in the SAP portfolio. It is the foundation for our key solutions, like S4HANA, it's the foundation for our industry cloud. More than 53,000 customers already purchased HANA. And of course, in my role, I talk a lot to customers. And recently, we heard, for example, from the Canadian Pacific Railway that HANA is their single source of truth, the ability to deliver real-time information to all areas of the business is only possible because of HANA. What they said is you can't even put a price tag on the value SAP HANA has brought to our organization. And I'm proud to hear that and many other great testimonials for SAP HANA. And we are not stopping here with these great capabilities that we have today, no. This year we launched SAP HANA Cloud. And we will come to that in the remainder of the keynote. Actually, there's many, many more st stories and many, many more news around our portfolio. I hope that you make use of TechEd in order to explore those. In this keynote, we will dive into the SAP Business Technology Platform and how it empowers you as a developer. And yes, we can proudly look back at all the achievements we have done. But also we know there's still a lot to be done. And I want to bring up a topic that many of you shared with me. Because from a developer perspective, there's still too much complexity in the system. It's a roadblock for you. We are not yet the most developer-friendly company, and we want to change that. And when we talk about developers, developer today it's not just one persona. Developer can be a cloud native developer, can be a data scientist, can be an enterprise architect, can be an application developer, integration developer, UX designer. And all developers have one thing in common. All of them, they are makers. They make things. And we want to create a future where SAP caters for all these and more developer roles. We want to make sure that when you work at least with SAP data and SAP processes, this is best done with SAP technology. We want to help you to get your job done in the most productive way. And we have different approaches. You have different approaches. Pro code, low code, no code, independent of how you are most productive. We want to help you. Also, last year at TechEd, I promised you that we would listen even more. And we did. We are continuously interacting with the community. And let's take a moment to hear some of the voices from our community, some of the makers. Let's have a look. In the future, will there be a role for the old ABAP developer in the intelligent enterprise? If you will need to choose just one programming language which will be the most valuable in SAP future, what it will be? We are facing a lack of integration in some SAP products, not only in the technical perspective, but in the functional perspective too. 
One thing I do find really interesting uh, in 2020 is the one domain model and how it will make it easier for customers to, to accelerate integrations. How do you see COVID-19 is impacting SAP and SAP strategy? And how does SAP help their customers to overcome COVID-19 crisis? Thanks a lot to Tudor, Marina, Fausto, Daniel and Tomasz. And this is just a small subset of the feedback we asked for. And in the remainder of this keynote, we will provide answers to those and also, of course, more insights. Let's start with the question that Tomasz asked about COVID-19. And basically, we do see three types of reactions from organizations. The first one is in companies that are hit really hard and that now fight for survival. There, it is a lot about cost cuttings. I had one meeting recently about um, this kind of cost cutting measures. I talked to a CIO and that CIO was completely devastated, almost crying to be honest. Why? Because management told the CIO to basically not spend any money anymore. And that CIO really cared about the team. And of course, we at SAP also want to help in these situations. The other extreme is companies that completely think about the new post-COVID-19 world. And the most often answer and reaction we see are companies that adapt their current processes to deal with the new reality to become more sustainable. And in that context, I want to pick an example I learned about recently. And this is a proof of concept we did with Paul Hartmann. Paul Hartmann produces medical supplies. And to go through that, I would like to ask Raymond Heinen, their chief process officer, to join me virtually here. Welcome, Ray. Well, thanks for having me, Jürgen. It's my absolute pleasure to participate in this virtual setup with SAP. Ray, I know you and your teams currently work 24 seven, three shifts, weekends, because the um, demand for your products went through the roof. Can you share a little bit more background and how you are dealing with the situation, how technology is helping you? Well, of, of course. Um, like you said, we need to find ways to plan and predict the demand for medical supplies that went through the roof. And that's why we tuned, turned to SAP. And I'm happy that we recently collaborated on this proof of concept to develop a solution that optimizes medical demand and supply processes based on the SAP business technology platform. We started the project together with SAP from scratch in the spring with a mere vision of supporting the fight against COVID-19. It's built on SAP Analytic Clouds. The pilot solution not only uses internal business and historical data, but also includes external data such as the daily updates from the Robert Koch Institute about COVID-19 or the number of intensive care beds uh, on a regional base. And using a machine learning algorithm helps us to unify, access and analyze this data across these multiple sources and gain additional insights. Great to see how the business technology platform helps you to bring all these different data sources together. And you combine those in one dashboard. Give us an example how you use that to solve your problems. Yes, um, well, in time of pandemics like COVID-19, the demand of some healthcare products explodes, but not in a global uniform way. So in such a situation, it is very hard for us to define priorities, as we cannot serve all customers and orders with the same priority. Uh, hygiene and surgical hand disinfections, for instance, is something of where we see a very, very high demand these times, especially medical institutions require a lot. Uh, our product, Sterilium, is the gold standard in the industry for hand disinfectants for professional users because of its efficiency and skin tolerance. They use a lot of each day to prevent spreading germs between the different patients. And here comes the challenge. Given the huge orders across the globe surpassing our capacity, we have the ungrateful task to judge who is the highest the need uh, of additional quantities, how to split deliveries, and so far and so far. And it's not by who pays most, but by who needs the most urgent support to keep the pandemic under control. That's the way we run the business. And once we have fulfilled the critical need, we should know in which region the next demand might spike up. If we can anticipate at an early stage the most likely scenarios, we could approach the impacted customers proactively. 
We could verify and increase the local inventories and adapt on short notice our supply chain, even before most customers start ordering additional quantities. This is where the dashboard can be of really great help and will make it easier for the teams involved to prioritize based on actual internal and external data. So if you want to learn more about the dashboard, folks, I can only recommend the session CT102 on Channel 1 as part of the program in the next couple of days. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Ray. Bye-bye. Bye. Just like Paul Hartmann, I hope that your company is resilient enough and prepares for the future. As SAP, we want to empower you to face these and similar challenges, to help your company and also to help you personally. This is our motivation, why we implement the SAP Business Technology Platform. This is why we get up every morning. The BTP is the frame, is the core of our company's technology strategy. Let me give you a recap and an overview of the Business Technology Platform. It is the foundation of our intelligent suite, of our industry cloud, of our business network, etc. It is a portfolio of integrated technology solutions with capabilities in four areas. Database and data management, analytics, application development and integration, as well as intelligent technologies. And you see all the capabilities down here. The business technology platform is the essential component of our company technology strategy. The goal of the business technology platform is to empower you in your development role so that you can accelerate your company's move to the cloud or any other goal your company might have. And together with the community, et cetera, et cetera, we identified the three top scenarios to support you best, such that you are able to build extensions on your SAP environment, create value from various data sources, build integrations across SAP and non-SAP systems. And all of that in a simple and agile way. So let's dive a little deeper in our technology portfolio because it's tech -ed. And we will walk through the different areas, extensibility, data to value, integration. Let us start with extensibility. We make it easy for you as a developer to extend SAP and non-SAP solutions using the business technology platform. You want to keep the, your core applications clean. You want to have S4HANA and you don't want to modify it. So therefore, we encourage you to do side-by-side -side extensions. One popular way to do that is actually the SAP Cloud Platform ABAP environment, internally also known as Steampunk. And that is also the answer to the first question that we had from Tudor, our mentor, related to ABAP, because ABAP is still at the heart of the intelligent enterprise, fully backed by the business technology platform. We protect your career and your investments of all the ABAP know-how in the world, and we bring ABAP to the cloud. Because today, I'm happy to introduce the SAP Cloud Platform ABAP environment multi-tenancy capabilities. With the latest version of Steampunk, it's especially interesting for partners, because we allow you to host multiple tenants with a shared ABAP code base within a single Steampunk instance. This massively reduces TCO for any ABAP deployment that you have. And of course, the partner ecosystem is very important to us. This is why we are doing these and other investments. As you have seen in the beginning of the keynote, not all developers are ABAP experts, but we also want to enable cloud native developers to build extensions for more of our products. And we do that with enterprise messaging. And this is possible with S4HANA, SuccessFactors, but also ECC. Cecilia will explain us how. Thanks, Jürgen, for that great introduction. In this demo, as a customer, I want to differentiate myself from the competition with a new side-by-side -side extension on SAP Cloud Platform for my SAP ECC system. To ensure close integration between the existing system and my extension, I'll be using event-driven architecture. First, let's set up the connectivity to the SAP ECC on-prem system. 
we'll use the SAP NetWeaver add-on for event enablement to send events to the enterprise messaging bus. Since those messages only contain identifiers, we'll need to set up OData services to fetch the other required fields. We've created a sales order event in SAP ECC, which triggers a create event. This is received by SAP Cal Platform and therefore can be used by any subscribe service. To make sure the extension is compatible with SAP S4 HANA, we need to define the same API specs. For that, we'll download the EDMX file from the SAP API Business Hub and simply import it into SAP Gateway on SAP ECC. Once that's done, we're ready to start developing our extension on SAP Cal Platform. To learn more, check out the developer keynote DK100 by Thomas Young. And with that, back to you, Jürgen. Thank you very much, Cecilia. So what we saw is that with this NetWeaver add-on for event enablement, we allow you to build extensions for your ECC system the same way as for S4 HANA, using enterprise messaging. And that way, these extensions already become future-proof today when you are moving to S4 HANA. Another reason why to use the SAP Business Technology Platform is the opportunity to turn data into business value. That's the second scenario we talked about. We want to make it very simple for you to make sense of your data. And for that, we have a whole solution portfolio. The latest edition of it is SAP HANA Cloud. It combines all the greatness of HANA on-premise with all the great cloud capabilities, including federated data access. And in that context, I'm happy to announce today new integrations that SAP HANA Cloud offers by connecting HANA Cloud to on-premise HANA systems, to S4 systems, and to third-party data sources. And I will show this to you based on a story about two fixtures companies. On the left-hand side, we have Diadem Bikes. They are a bike producer. They are a, a customer of SAP for four years already. And they store their data in S4 HANA on premise. And then on the right hand side, you have CU Bikes. And CU Bike is a bike leasing company. They store all their data, including bike sharing and geospatial data, in S3. And Diadem Bikes and CU Bikes just recently merged because actually most of the fleet consisted of Diadem Bikes anyway. And both wanted to take advantage of synergies. They are now in the process of integrating the S3 data from CU Bikes with the help of SAP HANA Cloud because of flexibility, scalability, and connectivity. First, a database administrator is creating a HANA Cloud instance. And when the instance is up and running, he navigates to the database explorer. First, he uses the AWS Athena connector to connect to the S3 data of the startup. Next, he connects to an S4 HANA system in a very easy manner. And now, he's able to use the data remotely. And in order to do that in S4 HANA Cloud, he has to create virtual tables for S4 HANA and also for S3. So he selects the necessary tables and creates those virtual objects. The final result looks like this. We have all database tables combined. So now the database admin writes an email to his manager saying that he is done setting up HANA Cloud. The manager, she is quite curious about how HANA Cloud looks like, and she navigates to the Athena repair data. She explores the data and creates a visualization of repairs over time just via drag and drop. And she spots a higher than normal repair rate. Sadly, she is short on time, so she just exports her findings to SQL and hands it over to one of their trusted data analysts from CU Bikes. The data analyst now uses that SQL statement as a starting point, improves it, joins it with data from S4 HANA production systems, and she can quickly discover that actually the suspension fork produced on December 12, 2017 has a quality problem. That's an insight that helps. And with that knowledge, she mails her manager back and the manager can take action. And for that, she will enable the data lake. And enabling that data lake has multiple advantages. 
It reduces TCO with a proper data pyramid from in memory to the data lake. It expands HANA not just to uh, use terabytes and process terabytes of data, but now HANA can handle petabytes of data. And from Q1 21 onwards, she is now also able to store, manage, and query raw data files directly via SQL on files. That is why she now asked the database administrator to enable the data lake, which is easily done. Finally, let me introduce you to one last persona in the story, the business user. For him, we connect the SAP HANA Cloud instance to our SAP Analytics Cloud instance. And that's very easily done. The administrator just copies the SAP HANA Cloud endpoint, pastes it into the SAP Analytics Cloud configuration panel. And now the DRDM business user can actually use SAP HANA Cloud to directly see data in SAP Analytics Cloud. With that, companies, the company's data at his fingertips, he can now explore and visualize the data and create valuable business insights. For example, by creating a whole story about broken suspension forks. What should you remember from this demo? Connecting a HANA cloud system to your on-premise S4HANA system is extremely easy. Also connecting to other third-party systems is very easy. With the HANA data lake, you can now process petabytes of data. And very soon, with SQL on files, which allow you to query S3 buckets directly in Q1 21, you will get this capability as well. Also, with just a few clicks, you were able to connect an SAP HANA cloud with SAP Analytics Cloud. When we talk about SAP Analytics Cloud, actually, there are many, many improvements, not just regarding user experience, performance, and functionality. And actually, there are so many improvements, we can't even touch all of them. But if you even don't know SQL, are not so versed with that, we can help you too with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. Now, let me come to the third and last scenario that we identified. We make integration easy for you. And this is for all integration specialists, ad hoc integrators, citizen integrator, integrators, and many, many more out there of you that have to deal with integrations. Let's have a quick look at what we have done. The next demo actually shows you how you can easily integrate SAP systems with third-party systems. Rui will explain us how that works. Yeah, thanks, Jürgen, and hi and welcome. Imagine you want to provide your newly hired employees with the best employee experience from the first day in your company. Once you've added your employee to SAP success factors, you want to ensure that your new employee gets a welcome email, gets a welcome notification in Slack, and is added to a third-party HR system to manage employee benefits. In addition, you want to ensure that the employee is also added to your SAP S4HANA cloud system. So how would you do that? You use SAP Enterprise Messaging that subscribes to the event in success factors for the newly created employee. Next, you create a process flow in SAP Cloud Platform integration for sending the email, the Slack notification, and the third-party HR integration. The connectivity to the third-party systems is backed by the SAP Open Connectors. Now you can create a, a new employee in the SuccessFactor system with all the metadata. Once the employee is created, the SuccessFactor system raises an event in SAP Enterprise Messaging, and as the process flows are subscribed to that event, they are executed accordingly. As already mentioned, such flows are quite common to our customers, but the news is that the integration between the solutions of the intelligence suite comes now out of the box for the first business objects, like the workforce person that represents the employee we have just added in success factors. Once configured, the newly available SAP Cloud Platform Master Data Integration Service provides out-of-the-box synchronization for those objects between all solutions of the intelligence suite. And those business objects have aligned semantics defined with the SAP One domain model as the lingua franca of the intelligence suite. Thanks a lot, and handing back to Jürgen. Thank you, Rui. There was a lot of goodness and a lot of innovation in this demo regarding new features of the SAP Cloud Platform integration suite. For example, 
how we can use events to integrate from SAP to third parties. And for SAP to SAP integration, this has become even easier. I know that some of you doubted whether this would ha ever happen, but it does. With the SAP One Domain Model and the SAP Cloud Platform Master Data Integration Services, integration happens holistically and out of the box. And the best is that default SAP to SAP integration flows actually even come for free. Last but not least, with regard to this topic, I want to share with you that Gartner just named SAP a leader in their magical quadrant for enterprise integration platforms as a service. And now you might ask yourself, okay, how do I find this? How can I use this? Because I hope you're very curious now. And this is where our API Business Hub comes into play. And we drove new UX innovations. And we have Shilaya here, and she will explain and show us what happened. Thank you, Jürgen. API Business Hub is the central catalog for all integrations and extension needs. The new design of API Business Hub enables the experience easy and intuitive to use. Discovering integrations is just two clicks away. As we navigate into S4 HANA Cloud, a prominent Discover Integration section is available. Let's select Customer Experience, and we see all the possible integrations available between S4 HANA Cloud and Customer Experience. As promised, Discovering Integrations is just two clicks away. This will be available in an upcoming release in beta.api.sap.com at the end of the year. Thank you, and back to you, Jorgen. Thank you very much, Ilaya. Thanks for the tour. I really like that it now just takes a couple of clicks to find and then later on, of course, also activate those integrations for SAP to SAP and even more important, SAP to non-SAP. We hope that this makes you more productive and lets you really access our API documentation easily on api.sap.com. And everything I showed you in this keynote here, except when we mentioned it, is available today. We had that little exception with SQL on files, which will be available in Q1 21. And beyond TechEd, there are many, many more things in the pipeline and happening around SAP. So therefore, we innovated on our Roadmap Explorer. You can have a look at roadmaps.sap.com or use the short link here to go to the business technology platform portfolio. And if you do that for Q4 this year, Q1 next year, you will find that we plan over 500, over 500 new innovations just for our technology portfolio. And TechEd here is, of course, all about learning. As a registered SAP TechEd attendee, you get an exclusive learning offering. You can become a trusted SAP software expert and just register at SAP Learning Hub Tech Ed Event Edition for free at learninghub.sap.com forward slash tech ed. And when you learn things, hopefully you also want to try them out. And we also want to make that easier for you. We want to make it very easy to start your personal free trial. We have extended the Cloud Platform trial from 90 days to 12 months. And this is one step on the way to a free tier, which we plan to launch in 2021. And then we allow you to try and develop even critical scenarios in one technical account and make it easy to transfer that to production. I know this has been heavily discussed in the community, and I hope you understand that this is the right way to go, that we go together. Talking about the community, we also want you to engage there. If you have not checked out the community on community.sap.com yet, please do so. We have more than 2.8 million visitors per month in the SAP environment. We encourage you to participate, share your challenges, share your questions, answer questions, and share your success stories as well. If you are new to the community, we recommend you to start at community.sap.com forward slash tour. So let me briefly take a moment to summarize today's news around the SAP Business Technology Platform and beyond. We talked about extensibility with the ABAP environment and multi-tenancy capabilities. 
We talked about event-driven architectures. Now, not just for S4HANA and success vectors and others, but also for ECC to make it easy for you when you go to S4HANA. We talked about data to value, how you can use SAP HANA Cloud for your SAP systems, but also non-SAP systems. We talked about SAP Analytics Cloud, which is our go-to solution for self-service BI, predictive, and planning. And last but not least, we talked about integration with all the innovations in our Cloud Platform integration suite, the SAP One Domain Model, as well as the new Master Data Integration Service and the updated API Business Hub user experience. And last but not least, we want you to engage, to learn, to try out, and to participate in our community. And actually, all we talked about is just a small glimpse of all the great news that we have to share. And we work very hard to put together a comprehensive SAP TechEd News Guide, sap.com forward slash TechEd news. Let me summarize. COVID-19 really brings a new level of digitalization. And as developers, you are the true enablers for every business. We want to help you to be successful personally, and we want to help you to help your company. This is the whole purpose of the business technology platform. And this time is really your time to shine. By developing new applications, by extending applications, by creating new integrations very quickly, by helping your teams to come up with confident decisions, and by making it easier for your coworkers and your colleagues to work in your company. With this, I want to thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoy the rest of this great TechEd program. I will be part in the live executive Q&A later today and answer many of your most upvoted questions. I hope to see you there. Take good care and stay healthy. Wow, that was a lot. It was. Um, well, <laughs> I, I'm still taking it in. I, I started jotting notes as much as I could, but there is just so much to take in that we thought it was absolutely perfect opportunity for us to invite some industry analysts and industry experts 